going on, everybody? It's your boy Rob Talk Live Sports, aka the Devil Stephen A. Man. We back at it. We'll talk a little bit about that boxing, about that boy Jerron Enos. I told y'all, star in the making. <laughs> I got a chance to see that fight, Jerron Enos against Abru. First of all, let's take it back to the last stand with Brian Custer. Shout out to my brother, man. Excellent show. Go sub him up. Um, representing Showtime. But check it out, man. He did an interview with um, Jerron Enos. And this is before the fight. And um, Jerron Enos was just talking about basically what he was going to do to Abru. And basically, he said he was going to stop him. You know what I'm saying? And what did he come back and do? Stopped him in the sixth round. He knocked him down like three times, man. You know what I mean? Jerron Ennis looked great. But let's take it back. Brian Custer was talking to Jerron Ennis, asking about Philly boxing, what makes Philly fighters so tough, um, the whole nine. First of all, if you come from the city, you already know the answer to that question because you come from the city. A city right now that's played with gun violence and everything like that, you know what I'm saying? It's still a rich fight culture. You got not to fight if you come from Philly, period. You know what I'm saying? So if he wanna know what breeds the, some of the best boxers in the sport, it's the city itself, it's the environment itself. You know what I'm saying? I told people, man, you know what I'm saying? Like the city, Breeze Spartans, Breeze Champions, you know what I mean? Shout out to Danny Garcia as well, Tevin Farmer, you know what I mean? Everybody else doing their thing. But right now, man, we're going to talk about that boy, Jerron Ennis, man, because I've been telling people for a while, and I see other content creators now, they're starting to pick up, they're starting to talk about it and do videos and such and such. That's cool. But like I said, man, over here, real talk, live sports, baby. Like I said, your boy, AKA the ghetto Stephen A, man, I was already on it. Not only because he's from the city, because I saw the talent. You know what I'm saying? I seen the talent. And once I seen how Jerron Enos trains old school Philly style, you know what I'm saying? From the gym, the whole nine. Shout out to his pop and his brothers. You know what I'm saying? I already knew the young boy was going to be a problem. I already knew. And then once I started watching the fights, I said, man, he will be a problem at World Tweet. You know what I mean? It's a reason why they're not talking about him. You know what I'm saying? Because you know what? Just say if he was with PBC, he was over there with Al Heyman. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, they will be breeding this dude to be the new stallion in the stable. You know what I'm saying? Bye bye, Errol Spence and everybody else. You know what I'm saying? Because if you put, I'm telling you, and I told y'all, he can beat anybody. And I said this before he said it, you know what I'm saying? I think that out of all those fights, the best and what could possibly be a trilogy, that's right, a trilogy, is him and Terrence Crawford, you know what I mean? And that can mess around, like I told y'all, that can mess around and be the fight that Terrence Crawford retires off of. If he fights, if, if that becomes a legacy fight, a trilogy fight, and he fights to Ryan Ennis, man, if they get that, if they get it in at least, like I said, three times, man, I'm telling you, out of that three times, I mean, I, Jerron Ennis can either win all three times, or I'm giving him two wins out of that three. Because you know they're going to give Terrence Crawford a nod if he makes that close, excuse me, if he makes that fight close in any of those three bouts. He'll get the nod because it is Terrence Crawford. And some view him as quote unquote pound for pound the best fighter. I don't know how people um, has Lomachenko at that spot, even though Loma is nice and all that, but I never saw that when they say he's the number one fighter pound for pound. You know what I mean? And they say Crawford ain't fighting nobody, yada, yada, yada. You know what I'm saying? I think that's more or less the politics of boxing opposed to the quality of the fighter. You know what I mean? Because the politics of boxing, you know what I'm saying, is hurting a lot of good matchups. But this whole quote-unquote pandemic situation is kind of putting 
these fights into place because you need to draw the attention of the fans. And the only way that you want to do that is if you give the fans good, notable fights. So a lot of these strong fights, man, like you're going to see, you know what I'm saying? Like you're seeing Tank, Dav Tank Davis and Leo Santa Cruz. And possibly after that, you may see a Tank Davis and Ryan Garcia or a Leo Santa Cruz or a Ryan Garcia. You know what I mean? Something like that. And depending upon who wins this fight between um, Errol Spence and Danny Garcia, who knows? You know what I'm saying? But like I said, man, a lot of talk, and I said this before, I don't, but honestly, I didn't say it on the video that Jerron Ennis against um, Ugas, I think that would be a great fight. Must admit, I didn't put it on video, but I did say it. But I did hear a couple people, man, talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, shout out to Blue Bud Sports TV. You know what I'm saying? Go sub them up. You know what I'm saying? One of the um, one of the one of the one of the good guys in the game. You know what I'm saying? Go check him out. He he just did a video talking about that. But like I told y'all, man, Jerron Ennis is a problem, and Ugas is nice. I do like Ugas. You know what I'm saying? That Sean Porter fight. He are arguably could have took that fight but like i told you sean had the name sean, sean had the notoriety so sean got denied now i told you if the fight becomes a trilogy fight with chance crawford it's going to be the same thing if that fight is close if it goes the distance chance crawford could possibly get that nod you know what i'm saying that's what happens when you quote unquote not only the a side but when you quote unquote the best fighter in the world you know what i'm saying you will get these questionable nods. Is it right? No, but that's that's the politics of boxing. You know what I'm saying? If you do not stop or knock your opponent out, and if it goes the distance, and they got to go to them cards, depending upon how the fight was looking, you could eat. I mean, the fight can get stole, or we already know. You know what I'm saying? That A side is gonna get that nod. You know what I'm saying? Um, close fights. You know what I'm saying? You look at um, Lubin and um, Deshaun. You know what I'm saying? Same thing, you know what I mean? Close fight, but out of the two, come on, man. Eric Lubin, he's the more notable name. So he's gonna get that nod if it goes the distance. You know what I'm saying? Although, you know what I'm saying? He might've picked it up in the later rounds, you know what I'm saying? But both guys wind up hurting each other, but still it was a close fight with the distance. He got the nod. But Jerron Ennis, man, he can stop anybody, I believe, in a welterweight division. And I do believe even even the spade of the welterweight division, and that is Sean Porter, man, because Sean Porter is a problem for anybody because of his aggressive, you know what I'm saying, um, ping-pongy style, you know what I'm saying? He's kind of like Manny as far as, you know what I'm saying, like, you know what I mean, bouncing in and out, you know what I mean, the movement. But um, I think, I mean, Manny's, um, you know what I mean, better puncher, better boxer, you know what I'm saying, those better combinations. Um, Sean has... But, I mean, he still do he still does the same movement. But if you look at his last couple of fights, like I said, I mean, Sean is I mean, like he's boxing a little bit more. Like his last fight, um, he boxed, but he banged. But he's trying to box a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just like I mean, bouncing in, going in, and trying to steamroll. Because some of these guys, especially once you start getting into the top tier. They ain't gonna be able to do that. You know what I'm saying? That's how Aerosmith scored that knockdown. He tried to rush in too, I mean, too quick. He got caught with that right hook. You know what I'm saying? Coming in, dropped him. You know what I'm saying? And if Sean didn't get hit by that punch, you know what I'm saying? He, there again, he might have could have took that fight because Sean got a name too. You know what I'm saying? That's the only thing that I think really separated him getting that victory in that fight as he got caught with that shot. And he went down. It wasn't even he got knocked down, but his gloves touched the um, touched the, touched the ring, touched the floor. You know what I mean? That's considered a knockdown. You know what I mean? So if he didn't get caught with that shot, Sean could have possibly beat that um, beat that fight. You know what I mean? But like I said, if you put Jerry Ennis up against Ugas, I think that'd be a great fight. You know what I'm saying? In relative height, reach, skill, everything. You know what I mean? Styles. Um, uh, Ugas has that, you know what I'm saying, like that Cuban, I mean, that Cuban style, you know what I'm saying, I mean, he's a, he's a, good, he's a good boxer, man, Ugas is a good boxer, um, I think that'd be a good fight, 
and a good step up, you know what I'm saying, for Boots, you know what I'm saying? Um, some of y'all don't know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, Boots, a.k.a. Jerron Enos, you know what I'm saying? That's his little moniker, you know what I'm saying? So, Boots, I mean, I think, I think not only he'll win that fight, but I think he could possibly stop Ugas. And if he stop Ugas, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's really going to wake a lot of people up, you know what I'm saying? Because that just, that's going to really show if he stops Ugas, you know what I'm saying, what he could possibly do if he fights a Sean Porter. Because Sean Porter gave him trouble, you know what I'm saying? Ugas gave Sean Porter trouble, that is. So if Boots get in there and stop Ugas, that's going to make him look even more special, you know what I'm saying? Because right now he's undefeated. You know what I'm saying? That's like, I think like he's like a uh, uh, 16th straight, you know what I'm saying? Knockout or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So Boots ain't only, he's not only winning, you know what I'm saying? Like he's knocking these dudes out, you know what I'm saying? Like he's finishing guys, you know what I'm saying? So if he get in there, you know what I'm saying? With these upper, with the upper echelon of quote unquote, the welterweight division, and he's calling out these guys. If he said anybody in the top five or the top 10, you know what I'm saying? So if you're Manny Pacquiao, Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, he wants the he wants these fights. You know what I'm saying? Will he get them? I think he deserves them, but I think a lot of these dudes want to stay away from him because they're using the you know what I'm saying the risk versus reward scenario. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of it's a lot of risk, but it's not a lot of reward because his name quote-unquote is not notable but that's not true a lot of people know who Jerron Ennis is especially the boxing world but see in the boxing world if the fans don't know who he is because that's who's going to pay the fans so if the fans ain't calling for it the fans ain't talking about it but see now his name is starting to pick up steam you know what I'm saying like you got creators like myself you know what I'm saying and blue couple of people, man, you know what I mean, he's talking about him, you know what I mean, so as he builds up steam, and that name starts to get out there, man, people starting to look at Boots a little bit more, it's going to be undeniable, <clears throat> it's going to be undeniable, and you ain't going to be able to keep ducking him, you know what I'm saying, and once he gets that notable fight, I'm telling you, man, like, Boots is going to shine, and if he gets that fight, if that fight is made between him and Ugas, um, <clears throat> I think really that's that's going to be that's going to be the fight that he needs because after that fight he's going to get a fight with somebody in the top five. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be somebody in the top five because they're going to see this guy coming. You know what I'm saying? And like he said, you better you better try to get at me now while I'm young because the older the older I get, the sharper I'm gonna get, the more stronger I'm gonna get. And that's a fact. That's a fact. You know what I'm saying? So these guys, man, like you can't keep on ducking. Them. You know what I'm saying? Like that box, boxing needs, and I've always said boxing needs to get to the point where it's top talent against top talent. You know what I'm saying? That's how you can find out who's truly not only the best, but the undisputed. You know what I'm saying? If the, if the best fights the best, you know what I'm saying, knocks off the best, it's only one going to remain at the top. But when you got all these good fighters, you know what I'm saying, fighting everybody else but each other, you know what I mean, you're always going to have that, okay, who's the top guy in the division? Is it this person? Is it this person? Is it this person? And it's not even like it's only one or two top tier talents, you know what I'm saying? The welterweight division has a lot of talent, you know what I'm saying? has a lot of talent, you know what I'm saying? So, it's a lot of good fights to be made, basically. You know what I'm saying? So, with this fight coming up with Errol Spence and Danny Garcia, that's going to be a fight that people not only have their eye on, but that fight is going to open up some doors to a couple of people. And it's going to change the career of a couple of fighters. Because if Errol Spence comes back and beats Danny Garcia after quote unquote the accident and everybody is saying you know what I'm saying like where is his mind at you know what I'm saying is his psyche good and if he comes back and if he beats Danny especially if he's able to do something nobody ever done you know what I'm saying which will stop Danny or knock out Danny 
that's going to be that's going to be a heck of a message. It's going to be a heck of a message. But don't think that's going to happen. Because Danny Garcia ain't sweet. You know what I'm saying? Danny Garcia ain't nothing to play with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can talk about, yeah, he throws that, he throws that shot, closing his eyes, whatever you talk about, whatever you want to do. Danny, good boxer, good footwork, good puncher, solid chin. You know what I'm saying? Danny is a solid fighter. You know what I'm saying? He's one of the top guys in the welterweight division. You know what I'm saying? He has a chance, a legitimate chance, not just a puncher's chance, but he has a chance to beat Errol Spence. And if you have a chance at anything, that's your chance or that's your door for success. You know what I'm saying? Now, if he's able to walk through it on fight night, we'll see. But Danny Garcia has a chance to beat Errol Spence. Everybody's all we, everybody's already saying, you know what I mean, the fight is won. Some, excuse me, that's not necessarily true. But some people are saying that the fight is won because it's Errol Spence. And some people believe that accident or no accident, he's still that guy. And I hope he is that guy. Because if Danny beats him, and he's quote unquote that guy, you know what I mean? That's going to push his notoriety up. That is Danny Garcia. You know what I mean? You know people are going to use that excuse, a hey, accident, mine wasn't right. That's not my fault. That's not my fault. If you step into that ring, it's time to get it in. You know what I'm saying? That accident is not going to define Errol Spence because if it is, and if it does, he should have retired from the sport after it. But if you remain in the sport, that means that you still want to be a fighter. That means that you still want to be a champion, that you still are a champion, that there are still fights to be fought and rounds to be won. So, with that being said, if Danny Garcia gets in that ring and stops him, drops him, takes a distance, that's a victory in itself. Because if it's another fight, like that Sean Porter fight, that's gonna hurt Errol Spence stop. Because despite whatever people may think, low key, that Sean Porter fight, that hurt Errol Spence stock a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Because that made him look a little vulnerable. Because Sean caught Errol with some shots. You know what I'm saying? That he ain't never get caught with. You know what I mean? So, after that fight, Errol Spence was a little... He, if, you look at, if you look at that fight when he was in the ring, Errol Spence was a little relieved. You know what I'm saying? Because he knew that Sean got up in there and put him to the test a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, a lot. You know what I mean? Nobody has ever pushed him in a fight like that before. So if Danny is able to do the same thing and this fight goes the distance, that might be enough for Danny to get that knot. You know what I'm saying? Errol Spence have to go in there and dominate Danny Garcia. And I don't think that's going to happen. Danny Garcia is not Mikey Garcia. You know what I'm saying? So get that out your mind, people. Don't go in there and think that what Errol Spence did to Mikey is gonna to happen to Danny. That ain't the truth, you know what I'm saying? Danny Garcia is a natural welterweight, you know what I'm saying? He ain't been at 140 for a long time, you know what I'm saying? And Danny can crack, you know what I'm saying? So he's hitting harder than Mikey. So if Danny hit Errol with some of them shots that um, Sean Porter hit him with, Danny can hurt him. And if Danny is able to get in there and finish it, because Danny Garcia is a pretty good finisher, you know what I'm saying? And if he gets in there, and if he finishes Spence, legendary, you know what I'm saying? And it's gonna be a good fight. But I do believe, like I said, some of these upcoming fights, man, like you're gonna see a lot of change in the welterweight division. And a part of that change, ushering in to the quote-unquote the new boxing future is going to be Jerron Ennis, Jerron Boots Ennis, you know what I'm saying? So Boots going to be stomping the mud holding a couple of these dudes' asses, man, coming up. I'm telling you, if he gets that Ugas fight, if he gets that Ugas fight, and if he does to Ugas what I think and I know that he can do to Ugas, you know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, it's going to be over. It's going to be over. You know what I'm saying? That will be 
his ticket into the division if he knocks him off. You know what I'm saying? And if you look at his track record, he's been knocking everybody out. So if he stops him, drops him, or knocks him out, I'm telling you, Jerron Ennis is going to no longer be a contender. He is going to be within that top tier of talent in the welterweight division. You're going to have to start mentioning his name in the conversation when you start talking about these guys. Now the question is, where does he fall? Will you have him at number one, two, three, four, five? You know what I'm saying? Or six, if you want to do the top 10. You know what I mean? Depending upon who he beats. But if he beats Ugas, he's definitely going to be, you know what I'm saying? Let's just say top 10. You know what I'm saying? But I think he'll be behind that top 10. But if he top, if he knocks out or if he takes on one of the top guys in the top five, that will put him in the top five. So right now, I would say he's probably in the top 10. Definitely in the top 10. But if he knocks off one of these top tier dudes in the welterweight division, it's a wrap. But I know he's not going to fight Manny. Manny's not going to take that fight. I already know that. So... <clears throat> Besides Ugas, I think that um, if he wanted to pursue somebody besides Ugas in a welterweight division, that's a top talent, besides Ugas, I'd go after Thurman. You know what I'm saying? I'd be on Thurman head. You know what I'm saying? Because Thurman, he's trying to get, I think Thurman's really trying to cash out because with all the injuries and all that, He's trying to get that Manny rematch, you know what I'm saying? He's trying to get a couple more fights, you know what I'm saying? And he's trying to get ready to cash out because the injuries are piling up. You know what I'm saying? Hand, elbows, whatever, you know what I'm saying? And they ain't talking about, you know what I'm saying, like your knee or your foot or your back. No. These are your tools, you know what I'm saying? These are your tools in boxing. So once they start getting dull, once they're not sharp anymore, you know what I'm saying? Then you got to hang it up, you know what I'm saying? And it's not like you're losing speed or you're losing power. No, you're having injuries that are limiting these capabilities. You know what I'm saying? So I would definitely go after Thurman. You know what I'm saying? If he gets that Ugas fight, hypothetically speaking, if he gets that Ugas fight and he wins that Ugas fight and he's able to get another fight against a top tier um, talent in the welterweight division, the next person I'm going after is Keith Thurman. And once you knock off Keith Thurman, after that, <clears throat> I'll go after Sean Porter. You know what I'm saying? Because Sean Porter is like the boogeyman. And if you're able to knock off Sean Porter, you're the top three. Jerianis would be in the top three. So within the next year or two, he could potentially be number one in the welterweight division or in the top three of the welterweight division. Meaning, depending upon how everything adds up, Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford, Jerron Enos, no specific order, you know what I'm saying? But Terrence and Errol, depending upon the upcoming fights, how they will be looking, is really going to solidify their status. Like I said, Errol has a fight coming up. Terrence is still trying to figure it out over there at top rank what's going on a lot of people say you should jump ship you know get over on at the PBC because that's what the you know what I'm saying that's what the prime principle is you know what I'm saying but we shall see I mean it's the reason why he went over there with um top rank and ESPN you know what I'm saying but um I can't sit up there and dictate another man's business you know what I'm saying he made that move for himself and his family you know what I mean? So he got to ride it out. So once that relationship is over, if he does his own thing or if he rides over there with the PBC, we shall see. But like I like to promote, these dudes should promote themselves. You know what I'm saying? Start your own promotion company. You know what I'm saying? So start Tans Crawford Promotions. You know what I'm saying? Hook up with Al Heyman. You know what I'm saying? Let him, you know what I mean? Be your manager thing. And I'm sure a guy, I'm, excuse me, I'm sure, um, I'll <clears throat> will guide him correctly because if that's one thing that people talk about is um 
that's what Al does. You know what I'm saying? He not only puts you in a position, you know what I mean, it will be fruitful for your career, you know what I'm saying? But he puts his fighters in a position to win outside the ring as well. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I respect. When somebody puts you in a position to win inside the ring and outside the ring and make sure that your business and your life is straight, you know what I mean? That's somebody who give a damn. You know what I'm saying? And that is somebody who you want in your corner and a part of your business. So moving forward, man, we'll see how things shape up. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, Jerron Ennis, man, problem in the world to win division, ladies and gentlemen. I'm trying to tell y'all, man, make sure that you like and subscribe. Go check out some of the uh, old boxing videos over there. Real Talk Live Box, excuse me, Real Talk Live Boxing. You know what I'm saying? Great videos, man. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, you also check out the other channel, man. Find Your Peace TV. Um, find it in search. You know what I'm saying? Link is also in the description. You know what I'm saying? Also, you know what I'm saying? You can follow us over there. Our Live Sports on Twitter, you know what I mean, Facebook group, Real Talk Live, whole nine, man, information will be down in the description, man, but like I said, boxing is getting interesting, um, will be some great fights coming up, can't wait, man, but like I told y'all, don't sleep on boots, don't do it, you know what I'm saying, because you out here put people to sleep, you know what I'm saying, a lot of people are starting to wake up, so, Catch y'all on the next one, man. You know what I'm saying? Happy Sunday. Football Sunday. Fly Eagles fly. Salute. Honor to the people, man. Everybody keep your head up. It's a lot going on. You know what I'm saying? Wear your mask at all times. Protect yourself. You know what I'm saying? Um, remain humble. If you're looking for anything, man, I hope you guys find peace. But respect, love, honor, man. I see y'all later. Catch y'all on the next one. I will holler. Peace.